Okay, in this uh, video, I want to cover some of the features that we rolled out in February. Uh, we've accomplished quite a bit, and there's been a huge rollout of things uh, that have happened, and I'm pretty sure, you know, folks are not catching everything that we're doing uh, because we're moving at such a rapid pace. So one of the first things we've done is to um, add sections. So I will just call this new sections demo, and if I add a couple of symbols uh, to this uh, watch list, you'll see that we have added the ability for you to add a section. Uh, one way to add a section right now is to hover in the middle of two rows. You click this plus and the section's added. We'd give it a default name of section one, and I can say these are my ETFs, right? And if I wanted to add another section, um, and I could say these are my stocks, right? Equity stocks, and I could place that above here. So we've added sections to the platform. It allows you to segment your watch list. Uh, one of the good examples that I have and how I use it is I segment my high volume list with HVEs being separated from HVIPOs and HV ones. Uh, these are just acronyms that I use uh, within my high volume watch list to segment it out with the highest volume ever, highest volume since IPO, et cetera. Next is we made a small update to the UI for holdings. Um, so next to any symbol, so if I were to type in um, a ATF, you'll see that there's the H icon. We just put a circle around that so it's more visible. It's clickable. When you click that, you see the holdings of that particular. So if I actually pick a better example, that might be helpful. If I go SBY, I go to holdings. Now I see the holdings for SBY uh, and it's sorted by the weight as well. So Apple has the highest holding in the S&P uh, 500. Uh, next is we got, we simplified the stats table. So if I click Apple, um, stats table will now only show acceleration data. Uh, we used to have these pink and blue lines, which made the experience kind of confusing. Um, so we simplify that. Now you'll only see acceleration. The positive movement of quarterly uh, EPS and sales will be highlighted by this blue line if it's accelerating uh, fast. Uh, some other updates uh, we made is uh, we improved the logic of our alerts. So now when you set gap up alerts and you have you know a trend line alert or a price alert and price caps above, it uh, triggers really, really fast. Uh, so we improve the speed of that. We also improve the logic of it so that you receive alerts um, right away. A uh, couple of new data points uh, to highlight as well. So if I go to this, we added uh, run rate five day and 10 day, and we also added relative strength phase. So relative strength phase is uh, shows you stocks that have been outperforming the S&P 500 on a, an average 21 day basis or more. And if a stock is in a relative strength phase, it's outperforming the markets. Those are the stocks that you wanna be involved in. You could add it as a column. Uh, to your screener, or you can um, also add it uh, as a screenable data point um, as well to show you stocks that are only outperforming the market. So this is a really nice calculation um, as well. We also added guidance data. So we added quarterly guidance, company guidance data, uh, annual guidance data, sales guidance as well. So both EPS and sales guidance data uh, were added um, to the platform. So this is powerful. We'll do a lot more uh, how to and why this data is really, really um, good. Uh, to have and how to analyze this. So we'll have some tutorials out just for this because we can get really in depth, you know, why we edit this and why we think it's really powerful. In terms of UI updates, you guys will see that um, we've we've brought quite a bit of, you know, changes to the search menus for column settings. Um, data panel changes are coming up as well. Uh, but our focus is to simplify the UI, get rid of a lot of the blue, you know, big blue buttons we had in the month of February and we simplify things so that you're looking at data more often than uh, you're looking at anything um, else in the platform. So the focus is data. We got rid of a lot of uh, jargon, I would say, extra buttons, extra functionality that was not used. And we're keeping track of metrics um, in the back end uh, to see what people are using more often and keeping those and kind of getting rid of um, you know ones that are not used or actually cause more confusion uh, than any good. Uh, we added gross, uh, we more screenable data points. So if I search, uh, you know, uh, profit margin acceleration, so if I just say acceleration, uh, so we added profit acceleration, net profit acceleration as well. These are uh, key for the Minervini Code 33 scan. So we have that as a preset as well. So we added the Minervini Code 33 uh, preset. So now when you search that, that's also available uh, in the platform. Um, we also added conditional alerts. So conditional alerts is essentially, let's say I want to add an alert, uh, a pop-up will show. So let's say um, I go to the dashboard and uh, for Unity, I'm watching Unity software. I go ahead and uh, right click to add an alert, uh, it will give me uh, essentially a pop up and this pop up will now have an extra condition and that condition uh, will be uh, to add, you know, I, let's say I want unity to move above uh, this 2830, right 2830 and I only want to receive an alert when the run rate uh, on that day it crosses 2830 is uh, greater than 150%. Now I've added a condition along with my price, and this is a really powerful way uh, for you to only receive alerts that are most important to you. So if I go ahead and create that, we've now created an alert successfully. It's a conditional alert. Um, if I go to my watch list and my alerts tab, 
I will see that alert uh, right here for Unity. If I go ahead and edit it, it will say that, you know, this is the alert that I set. The UI has also improved. So edit alert, you can toggle it on and off. You can trash it. The duration, set it forever. And we're working on adding multiple conditions uh, to the um, to the alerts module. We have extensive alert updates it's that will be released in March itself. So uh, we're moving alerts to be a global functionality into a notification center um, and ability to add multiple alerts, ability to add uh, alerts on a watch list instead of a symbol, and then ability to have multiple conditions. And also the first condition uh, being any condition that you want uh, doesn't have to be price necessarily. So uh, that was uh, another update that we made with conditional alerts. Uh, we added two new ra uh, ratings uh, that I want to share as well. So if I go to proprietary ratings, you'll see that we added the, uh, let me go ahead and search that, the timeliness rating and rank. Uh, and um, these two are available in the platform as well. These were heavily requested. Uh, by users, uh, they're available under proprietary ranks, um, and you can add them as columns, and you can also scan by them as well. They update once a day, uh, every day after market close, uh, and it's a good way. We, we have more documentation in our knowledge base uh, on what these mean, how these are useful. Folks uh, that are coming over from market surge will know these ratings really, really well, and why we added them to the platform. We've made quite a few performance improvements. Uh, that's always part of what we're doing, uh, and also opening and closing bell notifications. So at 9.30 a.m., you'll hear a bell in the background. It kind of lets you know that the market's open, and a bell at 4 p.m., which also lets you know that the market has closed. It's kind of a good reminder in the back of your head uh, for the open and close. Last but not least, uh, we have added a whole bunch of institutional ownership data. So the number of funds uh, that we added over the last eight quarters. So uh, the number of funds two quarters ago, three, four, five. So fund ownership data has been fully integrated into the platform along with insider ownership as well. So these are available. Uh, you can add them to your data panels as well. And it's a really good way for you to see if Apple is seeing an increase in fund ownership, uh, if uh, any company is seeing an increase or decrease uh, in fund ownership as well. We will be creating a whole bunch of presets uh, for that data relatively soon. Uh, we haven't done that just yet. Uh, so be on the lookout for that when we do add it. Um, which will allow you to identify stocks with increasing fund ownership and increasing insider ownership as well. Again, a huge request, heavily requested feature uh, that we've included in the month of February. So that was uh, everything that we've accomplished. Uh, that's quite a bit. We had four major updates in the month of February. Uh, so to recap, we did watch list sections, uh, optimize the UI on ETF holdings, added EPS and sales uh, acceleration lines, the stats table to, to make it less confusing, uh, conditional alerts. We updated many rating systems, added new data points like run rate five day, 10 day uh, relative strength phase. Uh, and uh, we added the code uh, 33 Minarini preset, which was heavily requested. And the last two big ones are we added guidance data, institutional ownership data, and insider ownership data as well. So with that, uh, let me know your thoughts and what you want to see uh, us work on in the month of Feb uh, March and April and what you feel sh uh, should make it to the platform next. We're heavily you know, looking for feedback, uh, suggestions, ideas, and making DeepView the, the platform and the only platform uh, that you need for the markets. So with that, I will see you guys in the next recap video. Thanks so much for watching and I hope this was helpful. Mm -hmm.